All right. Uh, very special. Good morning. And uh, good morning to you, uh, Marathon Man over there in uh, St. Elizabeth, talking about uh, DJ Chris. Good morning to you, sir, and uh, good morning to all the listeners. We welcome you uh, to another Gospel Tuesday here on Vibes Radio. At this hour, we're standing by to uh, speak with our good friend out of New York City, uh, Bishop Nathaniel should be with us um, anytime now here on Vibes Radio. Um, good morning, Bishop. How are you doing? Good morning, Vibes. How are you? Good morning, my friend. How are you, sir? I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. All praise all high. All right. Uh, good to hear from you, sir. We are having some technical difficulties, but guess what? To God be the glory. We are hearing you loud and clear. Good, good. All right, um, I have some more questions for you, but I won't get into that because I'm just going to go straight into our topic today. Um, uh, Bishop, next week, God's will, I'll be posing the questions that I have received from the listeners. Um, we're going to be con um, going in depth uh, this morning with our topic, the High Holy Days. That's uh, what we started looking at last week after a series of questions that uh, you answered last week. And we are so happy for the able way in which you answered those questions, too. Oh, praise the Lord. I, I didn't finish about the Zika virus. <laughs> All right, so if you want to just go ahead and wrap that up, and we'll get into the higher holy days, we will afford you that time. If I can, if, when your listeners, if they look up... Uh, uh, patents of the Zika virus, you'll find many articles. Um, you'll find out that there's not actually a patent for the Zika virus. It was created by the Rockefeller Foundation. Um, you'll find that. Um, not that everything on the internet is true. However, as I said last week, the Zika virus uh, is, I just in there, they have a system for disease control where they is create biological affair uh, to sustain population control. If you notice with the virus, it primarily is concentrated around Central South America. Yes. A man also takes the many fields on you he says half of the population control many people. His idea is um, get rid of black and Latino a Caucasian, mind you, a mm -hmm. black and Latino out in Africa and South America. You have a mosquito now. Yes. As a pirate. And uh, it's a thing that bites people, uh, the women particularly, and it could hit his head. Bro, at the mm -hmm. rate. So, a, a quick way of stemming uh, the population. Mm -hmm. All right. Or just like during the time of ancient. Uh, Pharaoh in Egypt, somebody killed his own boy, get so that the fire would not. Oh, we're trying to prevent that. Right. And with Christ, you read about uh, Herod, who was an edict, mm -hmm. instead of this boy from two years old. Now, people may ask, but well, what does that have to do today? Well, yes. Uncle Whiteman understands that according to Bible prophecy, there will be 144,000. The book of Obadiah calls them. Saviors, can you get a word? Saviors. Mm -hmm. so, all the abortion clinics throughout black people have a Zika virus. By coincidence, by design. They are not going to the resurrection of people. The leaders of that state shall rise up and teach the true gospel to raise up the soul. In Psalms 91, watch this. Yes. Psalms 91, verse 4. He, he shall cover thee with the, the most high, and under his house thou trust. His wings and feathers of the Lord. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Watch this. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, mm -hmm. the arrow that flies by day. The arrow that flies by day is the ICBM. It says, nor for the that will walk in darkness. That's the ones that walk in for example, right now we're talking about the Zika virus. Yes. We have something called Ebola. Mm -hmm. 
uh, HIV, COVID pestilence, um, nor for the destruction that wasted at noon state. Yes. God is letting us know the great destruction shall waste at noon day. That's what we all must prepare ourselves for, and it shall come as a thief. What, what does it mean to say that wasted at noon day? Uh, break that down for me. What is the meaning of that? Noon day is exactly what it means. Thessalonians says, the scripture that says, When man shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall follow. Okay. Uh, there's going to come a time of peace, uh, uh, ooh, peace. But it shall be a time of great destruction behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Nobody what you see on the TV. Yes. Media is you manipulate people. Okay. God is telling us destruction shall get or shall be, be a new day. Mm -hmm. Now and it shall be so. Okay. Now we don't know what day. We don't know whether it's gonna be noon uh eastern or western hemisphere time. Yes. It, it says noon day. We must prepare ourselves. That's what that, that's what this radio show is. What I am sharing with the listeners yes. is for us to prepare ourselves for, Mr. Hyper. Right, right you are. Um, since you've gone down that road, um, what, what I, I said I, I wasn't going to pose any question, but um, based on uh, the uh, you, uh, your completion um, of what you start, started last week with the Zika virus, I'd just like to um, ask you quickly, um, Bishop Nathaniel, of your take, on the halftime show of the Super Bowl 50. <laughs> because I, I've been reading a lot of things, I've been getting a lot of emails and things popping up here and there on the internet. Yes, yes, yes. The sport, okay, sport is the way to manipulate our. You can first, you first read about sports um, in the Holy Bible. Mm -hmm about it. You read about it in uh, the Maccabees, where it tells you about the game of discus, okay? Mm -hmm. It tells you that sports, you bring the children of Israel, force them to leave the word of God and to follow earth and You can read about that, listen to it. your listeners can read about that in the book of 2 Maccabees, chapter 4. And verse 14, let me, if I may, I'll read it. Go ahead. It says, uh, it's the be over 14. It says, um, now such was the height of Greek fashion and in the heathen, heathenish, and to the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch, no high priest. Jason was an Israelite, wanted to bring the Israelite, make a covenant with Greek against God. It says that the priest had no courage to serve any more at the altar. The temple, neglecting the sacrifices, he partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise after the game of discus or them fork. This, this is the same thing you see during the time of the Olympics. You have it today. Yes. You see them where they hurl a huge, uh, not, it's like a frisbee, but it's made of iron. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they throw it. Yes. Oh, you know what I'm talking about, Mr. Hyper? Cypher, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Okay. Now, the reason on, it says, by reason, uh, it says, not setting by the honors of their fathers, uh, we are set by the honors of our fathers, liking the glory of the Grecians, the Greeks, as of all. Mm -hmm. These were a sore calamity came upon them. Because we followed these discussions of exercise, Calamity came upon us, but they had them to be their enemies and avengers whose customs they followed so earnestly that the whom they desired to be like in all things. For during this time, we desired to be like Greek with our hyper in all things. So for it is not a light thing to wickedly against the laws of God. Yes. I follow where he things. Oh, and that's where we get the Olympics from, from the Greeks also. Yes, from the Greeks. This is why he was taken out of the Bible, Mr. Hyper. Yes. They can push basketball, football, baseball, track and field, things of that nature. Where if you win, Mr. Hyper, you become rich, famous, you get uh you get women, of course, you get endorsements. Yeah, yes. Oh, so much luxury. All this is the force and a 
I know it's done on the Sabbath day. The important time on the Sabbath day. All of this is by design to keep us from repenting or returning. Now, our people, what up in that? They can't repent the Sabbath. They can, once they learn this word, hear this word, they're going to end. This is what the white establishment is for. Does not want our people. They don't want us to repent. Mm -hmm. We cannot stop these prophecies. Our people in the sport are going to hear this word and come out and repent to use the little fame and fortune they got to support this truth. They must do that. They have to do that. If they want to be saved. That's right. Exactly. All right, sir. Um, I like the way how you have presented that. I've been doing some research on it myself, so, you know... Um, you know, my eyes have been open to a lot of things in recent times. Uh, I will confess that publicly, um, just reading and studying and um, looking at the signs of the time and what uh, has been uh, taking place in America, in the Caribbean, and of course the wider world. And um, I, I, I think it is the look-up season that we we are in right now. We have to look onto the hills from whence come our help at this time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. We must look up into the hills as Israelites. We cannot look up into the hills as Catholics, Seventh-day Adventists, Jehovah's Witnesses. We must look up into the hills as Israelites. That's what we must do. All right. So, um... We are going to move away from, um, you know, the questions now and get straight to the meat of the matter because we have a lot of listeners this morning wanting to hear what you have to say um, about the high holy days. And we started that last week and we got a lot of calls. And um, although the questions, you know, we were posing them, those that came in, scores of persons um, after the program, uh, you know, asked that boy, they're, they're so sorry that you did not get to go in depth with the high holy days. So um, this week, um, for the remainder of um, the program, um, we're going to go straight into the high holy days. Last week, uh, Bishop, you started out by listing um, the holy days. So we'll just recap quickly and then the question the first question after you do the recap sir will um is this uh, what is the significance of the holy days okay all praise all praise the high holy days like i said later earlier the first one uh is the sabbath which is recorded in genesis chapter two that is the first holiday god what day okay now the sabbath day okay when you read Exodus, okay, uh, chapter 31, I believe it is, yes, uh, and verse 17, uh, the Sabbath day, it says, verse 16, I thought there, wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation for perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. So the Sabbath was what he created. Children of Israel, first and foremost, would have that covenant of rest, wherein God rested on the first day. So that is the first holiday, which Moses reiterates in Leviticus chapter verse three. Yes. Now, you read Leviticus twenty-three verse uh, five. It says, "In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover." So now the Passover is a day of deliverance from slavery. The Passover is a day of deliverance from oppression. This is what the children of Israel must remember to celebrate, okay? Now, in order to understand the charting of the High Holy, you have to understand that it is based on the normal course of Genesis. So when the Bible says, for example, uh, verse uh, 5 again, in the 14th day of the first month at the evening is the Lord's Passover. First month begins in the spring. That's the, end. Uh, the first month. It is the, the moon corporation uh, that ends in, in March to lead towards April. So the vernal equinox, for example, begins around somewhere around the 20th of March. That's when it begins. So that first full moon, which is the 15th day, will be your capital, but that's when you have to start counting from there. You start, that's your first month to go on, on through the year. Uh, the next 
time only that if you read about the Leviticus, uh, Leviticus three, you read about let me see something. Uh, verse seventeen talks about seek for fruit. Okay, actually, uh, verse seventeen talks about the feast for first fruit, wherein it was honoring of uh, your heart. See, let's do harvest from that time of um, three eight. If it's an honor is most high. Uh, the next one you have Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets, verse 24. Memorial of Blowing of Trumpets is your celebration. It's a memorial of all the new moon. Second one, which is a memorial of Blowing of Trumpets, is when the children of Israel blew the trumpets, the horn, the ram, unto the one true God and thank them for giving us his high holy day. Okay, mm -hmm. in that same month, we read verse 27 about the Day of Atonement. That Day of Atonement was wherein you do fasting that year's sin. Okay, now this is separate from the sacrifice that Christ did for us once and for all. Okay, for example, uh, let's say you set up your sins uh, five years ago. That's what the Bible Within those five years, I guarantee you, we, we all continue to, to sin in some shape, form, or fashion. Whether knowingly or unknowingly. Yes. Understand? Yes. So, they have a talk with a year. Mm -hmm. Then we uh, give ourselves the reading and fast where we're, we're in, we afflict our soul, don't eat or drink for a day. And we thank most high. Now, when you read these holidays, it talks about sacrificing. Of <laughs> we understand according to Hebrews 8. That the sacrifice was replaced by the sacrifice of Christ. Mm -hmm. So when we celebrate these days with the high book, we're not sacrificing lambs and goats. No, we are honoring one, the Son of God, because we understand that He is the Lamb of God, which, as John said, is the way the sins of the world live. That's what we understand. Okay, so uh, you also read this 134 about the feast of tabernacles. Okay. Yes. Speaking of tabernacles, was when we were in the children of Israel was in the wilderness, and God had us in forty before we entered the promised land. Now we are commanded to celebrate. Okay. Even the Bible. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, when you read the book of Zechariah, if I can, I want to show your the list. That, there we go. Okay. Zechariah chapter 14. Watch this. Because some people say, oh, you don't have to celebrate them things so much. Yes. When you say that, we don't have to celebrate. In the kingdom, the high birth, we will celebrate and honor all God's holidays. And guess what? All the other nations. So as well. Watch this. Zechariah 14. And I'll start at verse. Uh, I'm sorry, it says, it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of the to keep the feet of the tabernacle. Yes. It shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the king of Christ, the Lord of all, even upon them shall be no rain. Now, if there's no rain in your land, Mr. Hyper, that means famine, dirt, and death. That's what that means. Verse 18. And if the family of Egypt, Zechariah goes on, go not up, and come not, that have no pain. There shall be, there shall be the plague with the Lord. He say, even that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacle. The feast of tabernacle honors the children of what God did for the children of Israel. All nations will respect us, the hyper. All nations will come up and honor what God did for us. We are Jerusalem right now are like the dung hill, like it says in the book of Samuel. Yes. God shall raise us up out of the dung hill and set us up as king peace upon the world. So are you saying that, Bishop, that all nations Meaning that even the Edomites, they should also keep the Feast of Tabernacles? That's right. Everyone, even the Edomites, will keep it. Watch the, the, the next verse. I see. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations. Come not up to keep 
Feast of Tabernacles. So all of God's holiday notes, like said, my word stands ever. Like, when you hear young black men, black men and black women say, oh, you don't got to keep that. They, I said, from the slave master, white man, when they say food, just like that, you don't have to keep it. Yes. Through scripture, in Palaja, the prophet says, let no man judge you in the people you think are in the respect of any holiday. They yes. say, oh, that means you don't have to keep it. No. Well, that is a scripture that is always popping up, Bishop. I think you're talking about uh, Colossians uh, two fourteen down uh, there uh, because I have that to ask you because somebody uh, posted that to ask you that question. Uh, we can explain it right now. As a matter of fact. Let me get it. I'll read it from this. Then we will explain. In another scripture, it is saying that it is binding. This is what you should keep. And if you don't keep it, there will be no rain in your land. Isn't the Bible here uh, contradicting itself? Oh, not at all. The only thing that contradicts the Bible is friendly neighborhood. And the blacks that listen to the white men as God. When they speak, they contradict the scripture. Now, what does it mean? Paul said, let no man therefore judge you. First of you have to understand that. Who is running around Jerusalem touching the disciples of Christ about keeping sacrificial laws of Moses? You had the scribes and Pharisees. Hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Hey, when you read the book of Acts, that was their complaint. Yes. Believing in the sacrifice of Christ and go back to the laws of Moses, wherein sacrifice was ordained. Uh huh. Now, watch this. So let no man but judge. We understand who the man is. I'm the Pharisee. Now it's the white man. It says, judge you in deep or in sleep. Most people, I guarantee you, Mr. Hyper, they don't understand what it means when me to sleep. I've heard Christians say, oh, that means you can eat pork. Mm -hmm. You didn't see that? It just said, don't let no man judge you in meat or in drink. What does that mean? Hyper explanation. Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 17. I'm going to repeat it to listen. When all you listen is kill 45. It's going to explain the meat and drink and the respect of holding. Yes. It reads, It shall be the prince's part to give bird offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings in the feast and in the new moon and in the Sabbath. In all the solemnities of the house of Israel, you shall prepare the sin offering and the meat offering and the bird offering and the peace offering the house of Israel. So when it talks about meat and drink, Mr. Hyper, it talks about meat offering and drink offering. When it says in the respect of any holy day, because on the holy day we had to offer meat offering and drink offering. When it says on the of the moon, on the new moon we had to offer meat offering and drink offering. Also, don't let nobody judge you on that, because the body is of Christ. Meaning the meat offering and drink offering are fulfilled in the sacrifice of Christ. You understand that? Perfectly, 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 sir. Then, um, what about uh, the uh, the scripture with Peter when he was on the house stop? Uh, because I've just got this one. I have to put it into, and um, you know, he saw all of these uh, um, a beast and. Um, the, the scripture says, rise, kill, and eat, and he says, I don't eat anything uh, uh, unclean, and so on. Isn't that showing that uh, now that you can eat uh, these things? Isn't this another contradictory scripture? <laughs> <laughs> why, are you, why are you smiling? <laughs> oh, my goodness. This white, this white man has done a job on us so and Mr. Hyper. Why oh, my goodness. 
when you read the book of it's an act you know, that you're referring to. Yes. Act ten. Right. What a vision of unseen beast. Okay. Yes. The rise, the rise and eat. He said, "Not look, not the Lord. I've never eaten anything unclean mm -hmm. on that." No, it was a vision. Yes. Get down in Act ten. When you get down to around verse. It reads, because now Peter has woken up the vision. He didn't understand it. Right. He says, uh, this is when Cornelius, he says, and as Peter was coming in, I'm in verse 25, Cornelius had him and fell down at his feet to worship him. And Peter took him up, saying, stand up, I myself also have. And as he worked with him, he went in and found many that were with the point. And as he said unto them, Know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. The vision of the unclean is represented Israelite scattered, learning Greek and Roman customs, Mr. Hyper. Yes. So Peter says, it is, I should not call any man uncommon or unclean. The vision of rise and eat refers to Peter and St. Cornelius, who was of the scattered Israelites, who tells you the angel of God came to him and said he was out and he worshiped God. This was an Israelite, the scattered Israelite, the book that they called the Gentiles in the New Testament. Okay? Yes. He called them unclean. Now, Mr. Ivan, you notice know where it says, or come unto one another nation. See that part, right? Right. Many people, foolishly, look at, I'm gonna jump, let me jump over, verse 1. There was a certain man in the area called Cornelius, a certain a centurion of the band called the Italian band. When you read about the Italian band, Mr. Hyper, many people go, oh, this was a white man. So look, the white man can't be saved. Cool. So when you know that, according to Bible prophecy, no might shall be saved. When you read, watch this. You read in, bear with me, bear with me. When you read in Acts chapter, uh, bear with me. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Bear with me a second, I'm looking for it. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, here we go. Acts 18, verse 1. And after these things, all the parts of Addison and found a certain in Aquila in Pontus. Lately come from Italy, went here because of Cornelius, the Italian man. Lately come from Italy, this is why right, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from home and came to Claudius Caesar made an edict to get all the Israelites out of um, Italy. That was the edict. The Israelites, the Italian, what was called the Italian man, they were Roman centurions. You had Israelites, just like today, Mr. Hyper. Don't our people work for Babylon? Aren't they uh, Roman centurions working in law enforcement? Okay? Yes. Just say. So it was the same way in the past. That's why God came to Cornelius of the Italian there with, with for centurion. Oh, so he was just an Israelite worker. Exactly. That's all he was. Now, remember it said, come us to one of another nation. These people go, oh, so that means he wasn't in Israel. He was Italian. No, no, I'm going to prove it further. Yes. To the book of the, so here's the prophecy. Ezekiel 37 and verse 22. It says uh, concerning the Israelites, and I will make them one nation to land upon the mountains of Israel. The one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be for two nations. Shall they be divided into two kingdoms? The Israelites were divided two nations. That's why in the New Testament they are called Jews and Gentiles. In the Old Testament they're called Judah and Israel. There was a in the kingdom of Israel. Okay? They were called Judah and Israel. In the New Testament they were called Jews and Gentiles. Okay? That's what Christians don't understand at all the time. That's why Peter said you are of another nation. A nation, you had the other Israelites that were scattered away from the southern kingdom of Judah. Yes. They were called Gentiles. All, all right.
right, Bishop, hold it right there, hold it right there, hold it right there. I realize you're getting warm. Just hold it right there. We have to take a commercial break. It is not exactly 10.34, my time here. 10.34, 26 minutes, moving up to 11. Before we take the commercial break, Bishop, how can you be contacted? www.israelunite.org or you can call me at 718-308-9655 Alright, thank you so very much Bishop. We take a commercial break here on Vibes Radio. Soon be back. Alright, seems as if um, having some problems there getting the commercial up. So we'll just continue with you Bishop. We'll just continue. Are you ready for us Landa? All right, um, having some problems over on that side. All right, Bishop, we, we'll just uh, continue with our discussion here on Vibes Radio. And, of course, our topic is um, the High Holy Days. And you have dealt with um, the, the, the question that um, the Holy Days, they're still significant, and the Holy Days, they are not done away with. All right, um, a question now that is relevant to the topic uh, today, Bishop. I'll squeeze this one in. Should we honor uh, Easter? Um, it also says Christmas, but I'll just leave, I'll just uh, deal with Easter. I'll just allow you to deal with Easter because it's getting to that time, um, Bishop. No, Easter is not ordained by God. You read, or you only read, I'll call you this week. Yes, my Bible dictionary to church. You will only find the word Easter in that vernacular one in Acts chapter twelve and verse four. All right, Bishop, hold it right there. Let me squeeze another question before you start explaining. Then the words are in the Bible, they are true. Words in the Bible are true. Oh, right, so is isn't it that um that Easter is in the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then how comes that? Then how dare Bishop? Yeah, you said uh, that um, Easter you should not observe it. Exactly, you should not. But it is in the Bible. Yes, you have many holidays mentioned in the Bible. Yes. You have holidays set up by by uh, Moab in the Bible. The God of Moab. It just makes reference to their days as well. Yes. Yes. I, yes. 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 I, yes. 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 <laughs> Yes. Oh, all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Acts chapter 12 and verse 3. Let's see what the disciples celebrate. And because, and because of what it was. Now about that time, Herod the king pulled his hand to back certain of the church. And he killed James, brother of John, with the sword. Because he saw it for his Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then was the days of an eleven bread. Why does it say then with the days of unleavened bread? That's what Israelites celebrated from Leviticus 23. That's what celebrated. Watch this. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to people. That is the only place I for you about the word Easter. It does not say you celebrated anything called Easter. It doesn't say that. Okay? When you do research, the word Easter comes from Ashtoreth, which you read about in 1 Kings 11. Yes. 5. 2 Kings 16, verse 13. You read Ashtoreth, which is the same word. Look the word up. I'll spell it for your listeners. A S H T O R E T H. When you read about Esther, in the book of Esther. Esther and Easter is the same word. It refers to the goddess of fertility. The true biblical name is Hadassah. But the Persians gave her the name Esther because it honored her as the queen of fertility. Okay? This is an unclean demon. They changed the law name. That's right. In Daniel 1, Daniel's name was changed to Belshazzar. First, what Babylonian God, okay? That's what they did when we went in captivity. He changed our name, like their God and their custom and their holy day. Yes. So when you read in Acts 12, this is the hyper again, 
Easter is not, you will not find it any reference to the Israelites celebrating anything called Easter. You won't find it, okay? So uh, the celebration are how people go about, especially the Christian church, go about celebrating Easter. Are you, are you saying that that is false? That is some Babylonian teachings? That is what you're saying? Yes, that is what God is saying. When you read also, Mr. Hyper, here's another, I've got some more proof for you. You are listeners who say can. Black people don't like to research. Look up Diana also. When you read Acts 19, where it says, Acts 19, 24, to a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, or no small game craftsmen. Verse 27, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at north, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and magnificent should be destroyed from all Asia, I meaning Asia Minor, and the world worship. Goddess Diana is Ashtoreth, is Easter. It is a Canaanite goddess that had a multiple, multitude of breaths. She had at least 30 breaths on her chest. Google it, research it. It's the same Easter thing. That's where the eggs come from. It's the goddess of fertility. Rome took Ashtoreth and said, let's call her Diana. That's what they did. Uh -huh. You're listening, Mr. Hyper. But isn't, isn't the, the same Diana referred to as the Queen of Heaven as well? Yes, that you read about in Jeremiah 44, yes. Right. Heaven. Isis in ancient Egypt, okay? It is the same blasphemy, okay? Our people must come out of the, the Christian religion. It's, it's leading us to destruction, Mr. Hyper. This is why we are under a curse. This is why we have to come out of these fools. Side, but we have to. Uh, I was doing some research and, uh, you know, I've started it. Um, and it, prior to 1611, um, I believe, somewhere there, um, the, the word Isa is after the 1611 edition, I, I think. Uh, you, I stand corrected here by you uh, that the word Easter popped in into the Bible. And uh, based on what I've been researching, they're saying that it was the Jesuits after uh, King James uh, passed away or something like that. They inserted um, Easter in the Bible. Yes, sir. That is, that is correct. That was to let them know that Easter and Passover always came around the same time generally. That was for their scholars to understand. That's not for us, the, the, the low-life peons, to understand. But through research, we have discovered it, yes. So that's why Easter and Passover would generally come around the same season time, okay? Now, Mr. Hyper, you read Deuteronomy chapter 7, because many of our people bring Christmas trees into our house, bring the white image of Jesus, group their crosses on our neck, right or wrong. Do we do that? Yes, I've seen, yes, and at that times you have scores of persons that uh, participated in that. Seven, here's the commandment from God. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 26. Either shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be a cursed thing like it. Thou shalt utterly detest it, thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. When you bring cursed things into your house upon your person, like crosses and Christmas trees, Easter celebrations, you're binding yourself under a curse. This is what God said to us from ancient times. That if you do that, you're putting yourself under a curse. This is why we suffer in poverty. This is why abortion clinics are happy throughout our communities. This is why we're the last highest response. This is why our families are dysfunctional. This is why we are shot down in the streets and we die at an alarming rate of cipher. We are bound under a curse. We must come out of the curse by keeping God's commandments. Let, let, let's pose a question here to you, Bishop, um, on this uh, line of 1611. Why did all those books, um, from time to time, 
you um, on this program, you've quoted uh, from several bo books that is not in the Bible that majority of the uh, Christian denominations they use today. For example, um, just before um, 10 o'clock, 10.30 thereabout, you quoted uh, about discuss from the book of 2 Maccabees. Um, why did, for example, the book of Maccabees 1 and 2, uh, the book of Ezra, um, is Ecclesiasticus and all these books, the book of wisdom, not, um, not um, they took it out, out of uh, the Bible as we have it today. Yes, yes, sir. And when you read it, many people say, oh, it's not canon. <laughs> One quick way to understand that the Apocrypha is long in the whole Bible is, before I explain why, I'm going to say, I'm going to explain, but I want to show your listeners yes. for reference. And in John chapter 10 and verse 22, three, it says, um, 22, it says, and it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Mm -hmm. And Jesus walked in the temple on his porch. Jesus Christ celebrated the dedication. That is not recorded in Leviticus 23. So you, you know, the Christian listeners should say, well, why is Christ celebrating this? holiday that is not mentioned in our Bible. Mm -hmm. Mentioned in the book of Maccabees. Okay? So that proves the book of Maccabees and the other books which you mentioned are canon. They are supposed to be there, but those Protestant Christians moved them. Um, all King James versions originally before 1666 had the Apocrypha. For example, when you look up the Greek I apologize if I'm mispronouncing the word. Greek Septuagint, <laughs> yes. which was printed in 200 BC in Cyber, it had the book called Apocrypha in it. Okay? The Latin Vulgate, which was published in 400 AD, that also had the Apocryphal book in it. Okay? So those are the two great books he referenced to. That's where the King James Bible, based on the Greek Septuagint and the Latin Vulgate Bible. They, also, they both had the Apocrypha in both of them. In 1826, you had the National Bible Society of Scotland. They petitioned the uh, British Foreign Bible Society not to print the Apocrypha in Protestant Bibles anymore. You can do research on that. Okay? Yeah. That's what was done. So, because remember, there was a time when on Sunday, the Bible was read to the slaves okay, before we would learn, learn to read. As we began to read the cipher, we started to use the Bible as food of inspiration, of insurrection. And we rose up against the white man and started, that's what the Maroons were doing throughout Jamaica and the Caribbean. That's what they were doing. They mm -hmm. said, take the book out, especially the Magnus Creed. We made it outlawed to be read in Jamaica and many Caribbean islands. Yes, yes, yes. You would be, uh, once upon a time, you would be sent to prison if you had them in your possession here in Jamaica in the 60s, 50s, and 60s. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. So that's more evidence for cyber. Our people have been held down and stupefied by Christian white man's religion. For example, Passover is a celebration of deliverance, slavery, and oppression. Our people go, no, I don't want to celebrate that. Why not? You're oppressed, yes. You're enslaved, yes. Celebrate this day. No. You want Easter with, with hot cakes and buns and eggs. Are you kidding me? You've got to be foolish to do these things. What about Lent, Bishop? What about Lent? Because we, um, uh, uh, Ash Wednesday, I believe, is the start of Lent. Uh, you have, what, 40 days um, uh, leading up to uh, the crucifixion and all. What is your take from a biblical perspective on uh, the Christian Lent? Is, uh, is it biblical, first up? Oh, it's not found in any Bible. I can remember my mother calling me and asking me, because when I shared this with her, she rejected it. Yes. Lent Sunday came around, she said, oh, I'm teaching Sunday, so can you give me the scripture on Lent? I said, Mama, it's not in the Bible. You will not find Lent Sunday or Ash Wednesday in the Bible. She said, yes, it is. I said, Ma, uh, she was so angry, Mr. Hyper. She didn't talk to me for three weeks. <laughs> oh boy. She said, I just chapter one verse fourteen and read. Not giving heed to a stable and commandments of men. 
that turn from the truth. Let Sunday as Wednesday are commandments of men that turn you from God's truth. The listeners must understand that they must start to repent. But did not Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights and um, he's your great example. He's our great example. So if we want to fast uh, uh, Bishop uh, for 40 days, uh, um, uh, you know, um, it, that is not a sin. Oh, fasting is not a sin to die. That was quite this on, and when you read in the gospel, fasting for 40 days. Yes. Remember. But Lent, Lent is the fasting. Uh, they say Lent is the Lenten fasting. Well, Lent is not based on what Christ Lent is not what Christ did. You won't see the Christ. That is not in the whole Christ yeah. about Lent. Yes. People try to correlate the two and deceiving themselves because they love white man's place religion. That's what they're doing. When you read Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 19, it says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold the man, gluttonous and a wise man. What I want you to understand is that the Pharisees are calling Christ a gluttonous man. Not that he was a gluttonous man, but he ate a lot because why? He fasted a lot, okay? Yes. I'm running around a fat slob in the Why? The evidence is that he fasted quite often. To make sure his weight kept in check, okay, and to do the will of God, it tells you in Luke, is that some demons have come off people except by prayer and fasting. Yes. Also, Christ was able to see of the miracles of casting out devils, okay? He said that they come up with prayer and fasting, okay? You understand the Bible? Yes, yes. So, is there any scripture in the Bible uh, of the Babylonians doing this Lenten fast since you say it's not scriptural or any of the Canaanites or any of the Romans where did it came from um, you know where did it is there any ancient reference to this uh, fast that you that yours telling us is not uh, scripture well when you do you have to, our people have to really start to sit down and read you read about in a deep note, okay, um, you read about a, a young man, a child, called Tabu. Yes. You read Ezekiel 8, verse 14. It says, Then he brought me to the door of the gate and the Lord's house, which was for the north. And behold, it said, Women weeping for Tabu. Tabu, you only read that name one time in the Bible, so you have to sit down. What is this Tabu? Tabu was the resurrection of Nimrod, the boy king. And when you research that, Tamu, the direction of Nimrod, the boy king on December 25th, that's where you get Christmas, that's where you get Lent, that's where you get Ash Wednesday from. That's why I made reference to a book called The Two Babylon, written by Alexander Esler. He, he did research when he did, when he did archaeological things of the land of Israel, throughout yeah. the land of Tel Aviv. That's a great book. I can tell you. I, I, I've been reading it. <laughs> That's a great book. He explains Lent. He explains Ash Wednesday. He explains Christmas. How it all comes from ancient Babylon, carried through Egypt, carried to America and Britain today. We all, our people go crazy for it. And foolishness. We have to start to research this hyper. Our people, there's, there's an old expression. If you want to hide anything from a Negro, put it in the book. Because the Negroes hate to read. Well, I, I think in fairness, that was once upon a time, not now. <laughs> that was once upon a time, <laughs> not now. I think uh, we, we are coming into our old. We are reading a lot at this time. <laughs> See, especially here in America, the young black man and black woman, they don't like to read. That's why, this is why the Bible, when you read Nehemiah, the Most High commands us to his book, yes. like Isaiah 34. And 16. The, 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 the push of making money and sex today, Messiah, but is so rampant amongst young black men that we cast off the Bible and we want anything we can do to make quick money and have sex all day. Isaiah 34 16, it says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord, you read. No one of these shall fail, meaning none of the prophecies shall fail. None shall want her mate, meaning you cannot make. Bible, any other religious book like the Quran, yes, Ugamesh epics, you can't meet it with it. There's no equal 
It says, for my mouth, it has commanded, and it, it has gathered them. So we are commanded to seek out of the book of the Lord, the Bible, and read. It says, none of these shall fail, but not one prophecy shall fail that is recorded in this Bible. For example, Deuteronomy 28 says the children of Israel would go into sit on ships and have yoke of iron on their neck. Their sons and daughters would be taken from them. Did that happen to us in the 15 and 1600s with the Bible? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Nothing in this Bible shall fail. Everything written shall come to pass, come to fruition. So we must repent before the destruction comes. Which shall wait the noonday. We have five minutes to go, Bishop. Here's another question for you. Does the holy days uh, play a role in salvation? Yes, they do. Uh, in the context of the hype, only that in this context, that when we do things, we like Judges 5 and 11, if I, if I can read it. Uh, we just read that um, in the kingdom, we are going to be celebrating. Can we just read that? Yes. Now, when you read Judges 5, verse 11, here's to what the prophetess or at the same state of. She said, Judges 5 and 11, it reads, it says, uh, here we go, okay. These that are delivered noise of arches. Noise of arches, when you shoot it, you have a bow and arrow? Yes, once or twice, yes. Does it make a big noise? Does it make a lot of noise? No. No. Make a little noise. A quick little noise. Right. Watch what she says. They that are delivered from the noise of arches, the places of drawing water, places of drawing water, Mr. Hyper, if you reference to lands of captivity, you are a water boy or a servant. That's the place of drawing water. Mm -hmm. And shall they rehearse righteous acts of the Lord? Even the righteous acts of the inhabitants of the village of his villages. Israel. We're rehearsing with the hyper, that's all we do. Right now, all of us, man, woman, child that has repented, we are commanded to simply curse the righteous act. That's what we're doing. Because when Christ comes with the hyper, rehearsal time is over. It's no more rehearsing. It's on. Okay? For example, Mr. Hyper, let me give you another one so your listeners will understand. Isaiah chapter 66. I want everyone to get this with me. Isaiah 66 and verse, uh, let me jump down. Oh, these pages are sticking together. I apologize. Isaiah 66 and verse 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, say the Lord. Hear that, Mr. Hyper? Yes. In the kingdom. Every tongue, every mouth, every man, woman, and child must come and worship before the Lord from one moon to the next, from one Sabbath day to the next. The holiday will be in full effect. No more rehearsal, Mr. Piper. No more rehearsal. It's going to be no. So, 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 so the rehearsals is taking place now. That's right. We're rehearsing now. And Mr. Hyper, watch this, watch this. I want you to listen, listen good. It says, um, verse uh, 40, Isaiah 60, I'm in Isaiah 60 and verse 12. It says, for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Where those nations shall be utterly wasted. You hear what God says? You hear what God says? Now I'm going to jump down the same chapter, verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soul of thy feet. And they shall call thee, city of the Lord, the Zion, of the Holy One of Israel. For the nations that afflicted us, Mr. Hyper, that taught us Christian lives, and beat us in slavery to worship and follow Christian lives, they shall come bending unto us. They shall bow at our feet. Why? Because we be established on earth as the servants of the one true God. And it will be our job to subdue all nations, make them obey the commandments of God. So just do the part. Do you understand that? <laughs> does the does the high holy days allows the allows um, an individual to know um, the time or the time that you're living in? 
Say it again, I'm sorry. The, the high holidays, uh, we just have a minute to go. Um, these high holidays, um, uh, I, I got this question. High holidays allows um, an individual to know the time. Is that true? Yes, yes, it does. Because when you read, like I said, in Genesis 1, verse 14, it talks about when God created sun and the moon. Yes. Think were for times of peace. Yeah. So the peace you read about in Leviticus 23, you have to go according to the moon, new moon from Passover on. Sabbath was one that was not based on the new moon because if you recall, the new moon was created on the fourth day. Yes. Okay. Uh, the Sabbath came three days later. Okay. So what the Sabbath was not based on. But when you read Leviticus 23 verse. Down, when it talks about Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of Weeks, Memorial of the Trumpets, that was charted by the new moon. Okay, that's how we, that's how you know the times, Mr. Hyper. That's how you know times. Like I tell you, Passover is always the first, in the first month, which is spring. So, based on that, you'll always know the time. Yes. It cannot change. All right, Bishop, we have to leave it there. We are spot on. It's now exactly 11 a.m. right here on Vibes Radio. I want to thank you so very much, my friend, for the able way that uh, you uh, um, uh, lead this discussion this morning on the High Holy Days. We do hope that all the questions um, that uh, some of our listeners, you know, have submitted, they were answered. And uh, we're looking forward to have you uh, back with us next uh, Tuesday all being well. Before you go, uh, my bishop, could you just kindly um, give us all the details of your contact information? Okay. Uh, my contact information is uh, www.israelunite.org. My website. Uh, my email address is israelunite at yahoo.com. If you wish to call me, call me at 718-203-9655. All right. Thank you so very much, Bishop. All been well. And I understand that something big is um, in the pipeline for you coming to Jamaica. And I understand that um, a lot of discussions. Uh, I heard of the venue. I wonder if I'm, I'm saying too much. Anyhow, I'll just leave it at that. Yes, sir. All right. I heard you'll be in Sablamar in short order. Yes, yes, oh, we're coming there. Right, and there's a gentleman from the Orthodox Church by the name of Gabriel Silassi want to pose a few questions or two to you, so um, you can prepare for that. Okay, okay, I will. All right, sir, good, good. Have a great day now, and you take care. All right, uh, all the best to you, sir. Thank you so very much. I'm Eldon Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this Join IUIC channel to get your latest updates from all our YouTube channels. Shalom.